Alrighty. Okay, so let's start to apply this idea of what else can Doppler shift do for us besides tell us the radial velocity of a star. Uh, well, one of the cool things that we can get is stellar rotation speed. So just like the Earth spins around its axis, so too do stars spin around their axes. So if we're looking at a star that's rotating, then uh, let's reason through how we can use Doppler shift to actually tell us about its rotation speed. So here's a poll question. Uh, let's suppose that we're looking you know, at this star and we'll split it up into this kind of right side, which I've highlighted in purple and left side, which I've highlighted in green. Uh, which direction is the gas moving for the right side versus the left side from the perspective of Earth? All right, I'm seeing most answers for C. The gas on the right side of the star is moving toward us and on the left side, it's moving away. So would the gas from the right side of the star produce a absorption spectrum that is red shifted or blue shifted. Okay, so then this is kind of what that looks like then. If we were gonna take you know, the, the whole spectrum of the star, we're not gonna see just one part of the star or the other, we're gonna measure all parts of the star at once. But if we were able to measure just from the right side of the star, which is moving toward us, then we'd get a blue shifted spectrum. If we were able to measure just the left side of the star where gas is moving away, we'd get a red shifted spectrum. But in reality, when we measure those, they are added together. And so we measure both shifts at the same time. So instead of getting just one shifted spectrum, it looks like we have the spectrum that's been slightly uh, pulled apart so that there's both a red shift and a blue shift. All right, so in practice, then that means that this line uh, that was originally you know, sharp gets broader because those shifts are very small. Okay. Another question, so if we're considering, you know, gas near the center of the rotation axis, so near the center of the star as we're seeing it, uh, is the gas close to the rotation axis moving faster or slower than the gas at the edges? It might be a little hard to imagine this geometry, but because a star is not a disk and this image is showing it as if it is, let's see. So if I take my orange here, then gas that's close to the rotation disk would be close to the set, um, axis of the orange. So this is what I mean by close to the rotation axis and farthest from the rotation axis would be around the equator. So I'm seeing most votes for B that the gas near the rotation axis is moving smaller and that's exactly right. And the reason is, as I've illustrated on the orange, the circle for gas that's near the rotation axis is actually smaller than the circle from uh, that gas is far from the rotation axis needs to make, right? So if, if you're, you know, a fragment of gas at the sun's equator, then you have to be moving a lot faster than if you're at, near the pole. So that means that we're actually seeing not just one Doppler shift based on the rotation speed of the star, but a bunch of different Doppler shifts from all of the different gases in all of the different circles along the, um, along the stars, I don't know what to say, edge. Okay, so then because of that, we don't just see one single split Doppler shift, but instead we see lots of split Doppler shifts that all get added together. So then that means that this entire line that we saw before as a like, you know, sharp line got broadened out into this fuzzy line. And the faster that your star is spinning, the more the, you know, extreme Doppler shifts at the edges will be, so the wider those lines will be.